I'm having one of those things. You know, a headache with pictures. An idea? <laughs> Welcome to my latest headache with pictures. So, Zelda. I love Zelda, especially how charming it is. Quite a few fantasy games these days are doing a darker world, which isn't bad or anything since it leads to complex decisions and a greyer perspective on what it means to be a hero. But sometimes it's nice to play a game that makes me want to be a hero. Zelda goes the extra mile to show people who genuinely enjoy living in Hyrule, and it does make me want to help them. Now at this point in the video, some of you are probably wondering why I'm talking about this video game in a Magic the Gathering video. Well, what kind of internet weirdo would I be if I didn't combine my interests into a horrific monstrosity? But let's start with everyone's favorite, housekeeping. First off, these cards aren't real. Most of you probably assumed that, but I don't want any misunderstandings. Wizards of the Coast hasn't given me inside information, we don't have that kind of relationship. If we did, I'd be forcing them to make more suspend cards. Point the second. If you have suggestions for cards in this set, or if you want to design cards for it, the link to the card maker I used is in the description, and you can post the results in our Discord. Let's get started with Link. Here's the card I created. Link Young Adventurer. As you can see, he's a 1-3 Hillian warrior that costs 1 and a white with the following rules text. Pay one and a white, and you may attach any equipment you control to him, and if Link Young Adventurer attacks while the Master Sword is attached to it, transform it. I'm sure you have a lot of questions, but don't worry, I'll be explaining them all. First off, the color. The front face of this card is white, which might seem a bit odd. I mean, this is Ocarina of Time Link, who literally grew up in a forest, so why is he white instead of, say, green? Well, the simple truth is that white synergizes better with equipment, and I think we can all agree that Link's biggest strength in any Zelda game is using items. So I thought a Voltron strategy would suit him best, and the best color for that is white. It's also why he's a warrior, which synergizes well with equipment. The reason he's a 1-3 is because you start the game with 3 hearts, and honestly Link would be pretty powerless without his items. Think about it. Out of the three wielders of the Triforce, Link's only real superpower is owning a sword, and he only gets that once he's proven he doesn't need it. Which leads us to his ability. It might seem a bit weak, basically making all of your equipment costs two instead of what they were originally, but I did that for a reason too. I've recently started to dislike the universes beyond sets, specifically because they're so powerful. I understand that magic has gotten faster, and cards need to be stronger these days just to be relevant, but Worlds Beyond is basically the novelty cards. These are supposed to be the fun, wouldn't it be crazy if Optimus Prime was my commander, haha, <laughs> sets. So my goal here isn't making incredibly strong commanders, but commanders that are flavorful and interesting. But let's address the elephant in the room and talk about why I chose Ocarina of Time Link. Now, Ocarina isn't the best Zelda game, nor is it my favorite Zelda game. Hell, it isn't even the Zelda game I've been playing most recently, but it does have something that fits in well with one of my favorite MTG mechanics, and that's transformation. Okay, but Majora's Mask and Twilight Princess also have transformation, so why not use those? While that's true, Link, Ganon, and Zelda tend to draw straws on who gets to transform in any of the games, but Ocarina has all three Triforce holders undergo a change. Zelda becomes Sheik, Ganondorf becomes a pig, and Link becomes a twink. Which brings us to the backside of the card, Link Hero of Time. Just like in the game, equipping the Master Sword to our hero propels him straight through puberty into Herodom, with brand new abilities and more colors to work with, making this an ink-treaded deck rather than a mono-white one. Link's backside will have 4 power and 6 toughness, since you should have about 6 hearts when you get the Master Sword for the first time, and the following rules text. Pay 1 Ink Treader and equip all equipment cards you own to Link Hero of Time. Plus, Link Hero of Time gets plus one plus one for each equipment attached to it. Pretty straightforward stuff. What about the Master Sword itself? Well, I designed that too. The Master Sword is a legendary artifact that costs three, because you need the three stones to gain access to it, which is why Link gains blue, green, and red in his color identity now. It gives the equipped creature plus three plus three, which I've done because this is a weapon presumably made by the three goddesses of Hyrule. As for the equip costs, I decided to take a note from Blackblade Reforge and give it two, one for legendary creatures and one for normies. It makes sense in this world, as only someone who could defeat the three dungeons and get the pendants could wield the sword, and makes sense mechanically as it's a cost that can be reduced by the original Link card. What I'm most excited about is its ability though. 
It was kind of tough to come up with an analogous effect in magic for the laser beams the sword fires off if you swing it at full health, but I chose to focus on its status as the sword that binds the darkness. So, if you pay 2, you unequip the master sword and destroy a creature. But if that creature had a keyword like flying or reach, that keyword becomes attached to the master sword. Kind of a sun forger mixed with eater of virtue. I think that fits in with the theme of the sword being the ultimate weapon against evil and makes for a more versatile Voltron experience. Finally, the Ocarina of Time itself. A super important item that Zelda basically throws at you like she's a troubled teen and you're a mailbox with less personality. The Ocarina of Time is also a legendary artifact that costs two and has the rules text, pay one, exile target instant or sorcery from your hand, deck, or graveyard. Then, tap and pay X. You may cast an instant or sorcery exiled with the Ocarina of Time that costs X. The idea with this is that throughout the game, Link learns songs for the Ocarina that help him solve puzzles and traverse the world. What we ended up with was a stronger Kayla's music box, since you can search for the cards and filter any color of mana into the X cost. I was a bit worried at first that having a card that tutors any instant or sorcery for basically 3 mana on the first turn you play it might be a little strong, but I think only being able to play one spell a turn without untap effects, not to mention how much artifact removal there is these days, makes it manageable. And there you have it, the 4 cards I designed for the first Legend of Zelda Universes Beyond Commander deck. Just to say again, these cards don't exist, I made them for fun, but let me know if you'd play with them, if they did exist, or if I got anything wrong. There are plenty of other cards you could make, like a Wind Waker Link that has a vehicle focus, or a Twilight Princess Link that has a day-night focus. And like I said in the beginning, if you want to make those cards and rub their superiority in my face, go ahead and post it on our Discord. But speaking of superiority, special thanks to our $5 a month patrons, Dorian, Liam Anderson, and Discordance. These awesome peeps are a big part of the reason I can spend weeks at a time imagining and making cards that'll never exist without feeling like an idiot, so thank you. And thank you for watching. Leave a comment, do a subscribe, take care of yourselves, and get hype for Zelda next time. Bye!